Hey, it's Glenn with the All Stars Cars channel. Thanks for joining me here today. We're going to replace the steering components on a 2011 Ford E350 Super Duty van. So that includes the inner and outer tie rod ends, the center link, and what you might feel going down the road is a loose steering wheel, they call it. So you've got all this play left to right, and basically you're not feeling the van do what it's supposed to do, which is perform. <laughs> anyway, if you're feeling that, you need to check those components out. In this video, I'm gonna show you how it's done. It's fairly simple, so I'll give you the tips and tricks you need, the tools, all that good stuff. Thanks for stopping by. Um, in this video, I've already replaced the ball joints you'll see. Now, I have a two-part video on that, so if you need to do that or inspect them, check that out. I'll leave the links in the description down below. Other than that, sit back, enjoy. Enjoy? Yeah, enjoy it. And uh, thanks for joining me. So let me show you the setup. What I did was I took all the new stuff and put it together basically on the floor so that it'll be easier to put in in one shot. This is the outer right side tie rod end for the passenger side. Then there's an adjusting sleeve. And these are like left hand thread, so they're opposite on that side. Then you have the center link right across here. And this will actually go over to the, uh, what is it, the pitman arm where the steering, you know, the steering box is. So that'll move this way and push everything where it needs to go. And then you've got this inner uh, driver's side tie rod end and that left side, and then the adjusting sleeve and then the left side outer tie rod. And so that goes right up in here. And let me show you so you can see. So that's gonna go on the left side right into that steering knuckle. Right here, this bad boy, right there, comes across. You can see where it ties the uh, center link ties in right here. There's our steering box up there. This one comes across and to the passenger side. So there's a cotter pin here, and the first thing we want to do is grab onto that, yank it out. Oop! This little castle locking washer just uh, popped off. So I'm not sure we need to reuse that. The Moog tie rod ends usually come with new stuff. So to get this outer right tie rod end off, we're gonna use a 21 socket and zip that all the way off. You can put some PB if you want on that too. If it looks extra rusty. Now what you wanna do is take your nut that you just took off and put it on there a couple of threads just so that um, when this pops, nothing fly, nothing goes flying. Now we're gonna beat on the knuckle right here to remove it, but you can use a spreader. So if you're gonna reuse this, there's different spreaders and puller kind of deals where you don't wanna rip the boot on your tie rod end, you can use those tools. We're gonna replace this, so I'm not worried, but I am gonna beat it right here with a three, three pound sledge, and hopefully the light won't be in the way. I don't know, we'll see how, how this goes trying my best here and I do have safety glasses on so I'll whack this until this gets loose the vibration will cause it to free up there it goes oops I hit the camera a little bit that's all right so that's out now take our nut off and you want to loosen these all the way before you break them free because I've seen where uh, <laughs> it's happened to me where the nut gets stuck on the on the thread and it'll just spin and spin and spin. So you get screwed, you'll have to wind up cutting it off to get the get the tie rod end off. So there it's on a couple of threads. Let me uh, put some pressure and beat on it. There it goes, it just pops. So see that? Okay. There we go. So that's loose. Now I want to get these up here. Take this cotter pin out. Sometimes you can just take them out by hand. You don't even need a pair of dikes to yank them out. That one came right out. That's garbage. I'm gonna take this little crown uh, washer, I guess you call it. Stops that nut from spinning. I'm gonna spray this. Give it a little, little penetrant. Never hurts. And uh, let's see if I can spin this off now. Oh, we'll see how tight it is. Might need to get the hammer. Uh, let's see. Oh, there we go. I got it. So it's take me a 
couple of minutes. I can't get my air wrench up in here. It's too tight, so got to do it the old-fashioned way. this extendable half inch ratchet I got you put so much leverage on there and it, you know it just makes it so much easier so that's it that thing's off just about finish it up with the wrench now wrong wrench Okay, that's off. Done. Now we don't even need to worry about this one here. I don't know what I was thinking. Because um, it's all together. So we're just going to smack this right here. See what we got. Uh, let, me put the, let me put the nut on a couple of threads here so nothing crashes too hard. Okay. There it goes. Bingo. Okay, so now, I'm not sure what you guys can see, but I'm going to pop this driver's side outer tie rod end up and off. Okay, so that's off now. And I'm going to take this nut out. We already got the passenger side free, so all this will drop out. Let me drag this out. This is scrap metal now. Let me show you, uh, all these are really worn out. Let me see these tire rod ends. Yeah, I can wiggle them all by hand, but this is like really bad here. So, the symptom, let me show you. So the problem with these are they're all worn out. So this is all this extra slop in here. All the tie rod ends were like that. So you've got a lot of, going down the road, the steering wheel, you get that, you know, loose kind of feeling. So it's garbage, time for the new stuff. All right, some other prep work I did before I took the old one out. I took some measurements like from this center point to the, let's say the driver side center of the outer tie rod end. That was 24 and a half. So I took a tape measure and while the old one was still in, did all that. So I have an idea of where it's got to be. Now you're going to have to, you know, you get an alignment done to set the toe in or out this way. So it's going to need an alignment. It, had, it got new ball joints, so it needs one anyhow. But anyway, that's something I did ahead of time. I also put all these grease zerks in, or grease fittings. They're zerks, Z-E-R-K. And threaded those in and tightened them down with a, I believe it was a seven millimeter. I used a quarter inch drive uh, socket and every one of those now has their grease fitting. So what we'll do is we'll put everything in, I'm gonna to torque it all down, put the cotter pins in, and then we'll re just grease everything in one shot. Woo, let me get my old butt back in here. Get this stuff in, get it done. It's dark outside. Kind of fortunate because it's February 3rd, 2020, and it was like 60 degrees today, which was awesome, so. Let me wipe some of this mess off of here. Get some of this excess grease off. There we go. All right. And this arm goes right up to your steering box. That's where your steering box is. Comes down from your steering column. Uh, where should we start? Let me let me take the nut off of these ends of these uh, tie rod ends first. So I believe they're also 21 millimeter, which is, uh, what is that, 3 quarters, or 13 sixteenths, I mean. All right, so set that, set the outer tie rod end in. This is going to be like that. You already got your uh, clamps on. We're going to tighten these for the adjusting sleeve. We'll do that afterwards. But Push that down as far as you can, and then get the uh, castle nut started. 
so these don't have that separate castle washer deal. I'm just going to put your cotter pin right through there. So just get that pretty much hand snug right now, which is good. And let me go over here and get the passenger side started. And then we'll get this one in. One of these days I will buy myself a lift. Oh boy. I'm not getting any younger, that's for sure. Alright. Come on, get in there, baby. Go in. You gotta talk to it sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't want to cooperate. You gotta talk to it. So, let me uh, get a nut started on that one. That way it just, you know, doesn't pop out and hit me in the head. It's like the last thing I need. This goes over here. Okay. Let's get this in the pit, man. I don't know if what you can see, what you can't see, but it is what it is. Now, like I say, I got that um, passenger side tire is off the ground so that I can move this to where I need it to be. So I just slam that up in there. Let me get some light. Maybe that would help. There we go. And I got a nut over here for that. Where are you? Here it is. So we'll get this guy on. So it's, it's not too difficult of a job. I mean, it's a little tricky, I guess, if you're not familiar with... Now, there's pullers and stuff, too, that can pull these tie rod ends. Especially if you don't want to damage them. You're doing repair work that you need to put them back. Um, I'll show you that kit. I have that kit. But when I'm replacing stuff, I just beat on it. All right, and then this one's gonna go through here. So, let me see if I can, uh, let's see, what can we do here? I'm gonna bring this out. Okay, I'm just turning the adjusting sleeve now. So I left the driver's side um, tire on the ground on purpose. And of course I had the steering wheel straight when I did this. So, let's, that should get me pretty close. At least close enough to get it to go down the road. Let's see. Uh, there we go. Uh, am I going shorter or longer? Let's see. There we go. This is making it longer. Okay. There it is. Alrighty. So let me find the nut to that. Oh, where are you, baby? Okay, found my nut. <laughs> All right. So squeeze as tight as you can. Get that started. And everything is in place now. So what we need to do is torque this stuff down. Oop, a big dummy. It would help if I put the castle nut on the right way. By the way, the castle, the uh, crown part goes out. There you go. <laughs> For any uh, newbies doing this like, like I just did. Alrighty. You get in the heat of the moment and forget these things sometimes. Alright. But uh, as long as you find them before it's all over, that's what matters. Let me get my wrench. And I'm going to start with this one here. Tighten this sucker down. In fact, I think I can get some socket action on that. So let's do that. Gotta speed things up. Oop, going the wrong way. You probably can't see what I'm doing, but it's, if you've ever tightened down a nut, that's all there is to it. And then I gotta get the torque wrench out. I'll do all that right before I grease. And uh, we gotta get those holes lined up for the cotter pins. So that's important. That's an important step. Let me just get these started. Get some tension on these bad boys. Make sure all your rubber uh, boots are on before you do this, too. They should all have boots. That's for sure. All right, we're getting snugged up. That's good. And when you tighten these, and you make them, you know, get to the torque that you need. 
what you do is you never go back after you snug this up if you can't line up your cotter pin you don't loosen it and then line up your cotter pin you got to go to the next one you got to commit so it's kind of sometimes a guessing game whether you can get that final you know torque on it or you got to stop but I can tell you right now, that probably should be about, I'd say, what, 70 to 100 foot-pounds. Sounds about right. So that one's in. I'll put my uh, cotter pin in now. I'm going to put it through the back side like that so I can see it. Take my dikes. And you know what? I'll show you a close-up of this uh, on the other side. So, oop, let me get this tight. So let's get this right outer tie rod in to torque. Torque this to spec right now. 70 to 100, we can handle that. Now, what I'm doing is I'm looking for that, you see that little hole right there? Hopefully you can see it. I'm gonna try to go one more here and show you what I mean. There we go, a little bit more. And then what you do is you take your cotter pin and you want to kind of test fit it. So let me take my glove off. Um, so you want to see if it's going to line up. So here's the hole right there, and this one lines up perfect. Okay. And then, in fact, let me do it forward. Well, I'm not going to. I like it. It doesn't really matter which way you put the cotter pin. I'll put it this way, but just slide it in. Your torque down. You grab one side of the cotter pin is a little longer than the other. So you grab that with your dikes or your pliers if you want. I use the dikes because it grabs it and you also can trim it. And then I pull straight down and back like that, okay? So that one's done. If you wanna put a little bendy up on it, that's fine, just so somebody doesn't get snagged. And then I take the back one and just push right up here. Let me show you. There you go, like this. So can you see? See what I got going there? So here's the other one, and I'll just push that up a little bit. I'll trim this one back, it's a little long. And that's it, you're done. Right there, all set. So here's a front end puller set, I guess you can call it. And basically what you're doing is you're grabbing in this area and then pressing out the, the stud. Well, of course the nut would be off, you know, kind of like this where you're just gonna push it out. And what that does is, that prevents you from damaging the boot. So when you use the pickle fork, you're going in here, you got a good chance of ripping this boot and then water is gonna get in dirt. It's gonna contaminate it and you definitely wouldn't wanna use it again because it's gonna wear out quick. Anyway, these types of pullers will help you prevent damage to the boot. Like this is a Pittman arm puller. This is, I think this is for tie rod ends. It, it depends. Now you might be limited on space. Here's another car I'm working on. And like this part is down here. so. It's hard to get a puller on, but you could just do what we did and beat the knuckle to release this without damaging the boot, at least try it anyway. So anyway, there's all different ones and I'll leave a part number um, in the description down below if you need something like this. All right, let me zip this nut out. I already pulled the cotter pin. So. All right, that baby's kind of rusty compressor shut off. Let's see if we can get this out. I moved you over. Hopefully there's not too much backlight. So you just take these claws and you put them right back behind here. And what we want to do is kind of center it up. Try to squeeze that on. And you take this center, I don't know what you call it, the threaded bolt part. So while I'm clamping down this way, I'm screwing this on. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. There you go. I'm turning this. And once I get it kind of hand tight, I'll hit it with an air gun. You could use an air, or just a regular ratchet. And let's see if we can pop it off. So what it's doing is shoving the bolt out while it holds on to the, to the uh, center link here. There it goes, boom, one, two, three. So that sucker came off, back it out. Take that out. And now what we did was we released that, and here's our boot. So, of course, this is old and shot, but my point is, if we were trying to save it, uh, we'd be good to go. 
All right, so this is our adjuster sleeve here, and there's a 19 on one side and a nut is a 17 millimeter. And what I'm doing now is I'm just turning this by hand. I've got most of the weight off of the truck, off the van, and you'd have to grab a pair of adjustables on the center here to uh, actually turn this with the weight fully on it. And I'm getting this where it's kind of in spec. I'm just eyeballing it so the tire looks fairly straight. You probably want a little bit of negative, uh, a little bit of negative toe, as they call it. That means the front part of the tire is kind of coming towards the center. But uh, I got it pretty close. So let's see here. There we go. So I just eyeballed the, the toe in and out, and now I'm gonna tighten down the uh, the sleeves here with these clamps. It's a 17, I believe, on the back, and a 19 on the front. Did you just walk all the way over here? Yeah. Holy shit. That's a hike, brother. Damn, I'm glad to see you, though. Did you, miss, did you miss me, man? Yeah, man. I was like, damn, let me go see my boy. <laughs> I'm like, what? Oh, shit. Oh, God, man. Uh, let me straighten this up now. Come on up. I'm having a blast down here, man. What? This is fun stuff right here, bro. What did you do? Did you do and get the van? Well, he bought it over here. Yeah, he dropped it off. I heard somebody wrong. <laughs> Somebody leave with somebody house in the corner over there. For that girl. I'm here, man. I'm here, dude. I'm not going anywhere, huh? When you gonna start these bikes up? You know what? Today was kind of warm, wasn't it? Yeah. I was thinking you going down there and show my mom. I'm like, what? Your mom's probably wondering where the hell you're at. She's probably like, where the hell did he go now? I'm just chilling, sitting out here doing nothing. Oh I man! Five bull riding down the road. You did? Yeah, both of them. they look? Who are they looking for? No, they look for that truck that you dropped and took me. That dude had tinted windows on his truck. They pulled him over. He oh was. boy! You get in trouble? Yeah. He was down there by that wall. He was that one wall, and then he took off from out of that parking lot. When he took off that parking lot, the cop was here. He was here. The yeah. cop was behind that truck. He was in front of that cop car. That joint turned around with you. I'm like, damn, he took off right the parking lot. He's like, yo, he got across that bridge. Well, I'm like, yo, you took off. He's like, yeah, I got over there. What was he driving? He was driving a Ford pickup. Oh, snap. Man, he got he got in so much trouble. Yeah, I bet he did. He was drunk, though. He was drunk? Yeah, he was drunk. Oh, shoot. That'll get you in trouble. I'm like, damn, man, he didn't, he didn't even stop. He didn't even come up with it. Can't be doing any drinking and driving, man. He was texting you while he was driving. Oh, that's even, that's double trouble right there, man. I was like, what? You know that. He ain't doing nothing. I'm like, yo, he just drink. I'm like, yo, he's drinking in his truck. You know you can't drink and drive. What? I see you still got your three out here. That's bad news. Huh? I see you still got your three trucks out here. Yep. I'm waiting for you to. What's up with I'm waiting for your buddy to come over here and buy it. What's up with the vet? You ain't selling that? What do you mean, what's up? I mean, are you selling the red one or are you keeping it? No, I'm keeping it, dude. Where's the red one at? The what? The red vet that you had. Oh, there. I sold that. How much did you get for it? That one got sold. Uh, 10000 What? Yeah. Oh, man, that was a nice one, too. Yeah, I know you like that one. Yeah, back here. yeah, I sold that. I sold that red one about a year and a half ago, I guess. Right, right after you moved. What? Yeah. I told you stayed in the neighborhood. I was there the day he ain't riding around the red, the red one. Yeah, I sold that, John. What's wrong with the van? Huh? What's wrong with the van? I told you what's wrong with it. When there he is. What's on that Sit. side? Mr. Goodyear's back. There he is, <laughs> Mr. Goodyear. So the van's back down off the jack, and I just want to show you how it all looks, how it came together. It looks good. Everything's greased up. Make sure you don't over-grease it. Just put enough to where the boot fills up, you know, and uh, it's all set. So, like I say, it just needs a, an alignment now to set the toe, 
and it's good to go. Thanks for stopping by. Like, comment, subscribe, all down below. Hope that helps you out. Check out some of my other automotive repair videos. Take it easy.